was about 1500 years ago that a tribe of people sailed along this river. They set up camp about 200 yards upstream and began to build a settlement. The people were the Celts. The river, as we know it today, was the River Calder. And the settlement became known as Wakefield. was in fact named after its founder, a man called Waka. In those days I would imagine that it was probably pronounced Vaka and became known as Vaka's Felt, meaning the field belonging to Vaka. Over the years this has been interpreted as Waka's Field, or as we all know it today, Wakefield. Several centuries later a wooden church was built on the nearby hilltop. The first mention of this was in the Doomsday Book of 1086, where it was referred to as the Parish Church of All Saints. This church, after many years of reconstruction and restoration, gained cathedral status in 1888. Consequently, the town became a city and the church became the Wakefield Cathedral. Wakefield became a very prosperous town due mainly to its location on the River Calder. Several theories exist as to the origin of the name Calder but the most convincing and probably the correct one is Gauls meaning Celts and Dare meaning water, Celts water, Gauls Dare which in turn became Calder. The city was a hive of activity both leisurely and commercially, and very soon it became known as the Merry City. It had its own cattle market and some of the old buildings that surrounded the market still exist today. The Grazier's Public House, for instance, and the Bull and Fair House. The old cattle market was sadly closed in the 1960s and became the site for the new post office. In the late 1800s, there were no fewer than 137 public houses within the old city boundary. Westgate alone had 27, today there are no more than 10. Kyrgyz had 24, now there are only 3. Here are the ruins of Sandal Castle. During the Wars of the Roses, this is where the Grand Old Duke of York, allegedly, marched his men to the top of the hill and he marched them down again. The castle overlooks an area which was once within the old city boundary. But in 1974 Wakefield became a metropolitan district and its boundaries extended to include many of its surrounding towns and villages. Nowadays the Wakefield metropolitan district has a vast number of attractions which cater for both the older and younger generations. Here are just a few. People have been digging for coal as far back as the early Roman times, but coal mining didn't become commercially viable until the 1700s. The Yorkshire coal field was one of the biggest in the country, and the area around Wakefield had many collieries. In the late 1980s, many of these mines became unprofitable and had to close. This is Cap House Colliery, and it's still open today, but not as a working mine, as a museum. It is now the National Mining Museum for England. Here there is a conference centre and an excellent restaurant. Visitors to the museum can go underground and experience the grim working conditions that the miners had to endure. You load 16 tons, what do you get? Another day older and deeper in depth. St. Peter, don't you call me cause... You can visit the winding house, 
and have a close-up view of the old winding engine. Say hello to two retired pit ponies, Eric and Ernie. Or take a ride on the train that used to run underground and take the men to their place of work at the coalface. Set in the beautiful landscape near Wakefield, you can appreciate world-class sculpture in the Yorkshire Sculpture Park. Here are many indoor and outdoor exhibits, including works by Barbara Hepworth and Henry Moore. Wakefield's latest attraction opened on the 21st of May 2011. It's situated on the south side of the River Calder and takes its name from Dame Barbara Hepworth, who was born and educated in the city. It's the only British purpose-built gallery outside of London. Inside are some unique exhibits with tools that Barbara Hepworth used to create some of her amazing sculptures. Just a few miles south of the city is Nostal Priory, the family home of Lord and Lady Oswald. The Priory and all of its contents were given to the National Trust in 1953 and now, for a very modest fee, you can visit the house and stroll leisurely around the grounds. The house contains some very valuable paintings, together with a superb collection of furniture by Thomas Chippendale. Outside, the lake is well stocked with fish and the famous Nostal Priory roses can be seen in full bloom during the summer months. Ducks, geese and many other wild birds are also resident here. At the end of your stay, why not visit the restaurant where you'll be given the choice of some excellent food, including delicious home-baked scones with strawberry jam and freshly whipped dairy cream. Here's something for the kids. It's called Escape. It's in Castleford, just a few miles from Wakefield. If you like shopping, this is the ideal place to buy the latest fashions in shoes and clothing. There's a good choice of coffee shops and restaurants too. But for those who fancy a more energetic day out, why not try the climbing wall and the rope ladders? No. I'm not in the Swiss Alps, this is the indoor ski tour. And whether it's snowboarding, skiing or tobogganing that you enjoy, it's well worth giving it a try. The latest attraction here is the Surf Simulator, also known as the Flow House. Escape is an ideal all year round venue, especially on a rainy day. That was just a very brief look at the Merry City and its history. But I suppose our thanks should really go to Mr. Wacker, or Wacker, whatever his name was. Without him, Wakefield may never have existed at all. But without the River Calder, he wouldn't have arrived here in the first place.